Hello and welcome. Today we're going to get right into this video and as you'll notice I've already painted it a beautiful vintage blush. I am going to kind of do the same technique on a tumbler I did about two weeks ago with the wood grain. So I prefer using one ink when it comes to the wood grain effect. However, you can use whatever amount of colors you prefer when you do this technique. So my plan was to actually recreate this tumbler which I made almost two years ago. Instead, it started looking more like my Crackle Faith tumbler that I also did almost two years ago, but without the glitter. But when it's all said and done, they really both started to collide and it turned out absolutely beautiful. Now, once you have your wood grain all tightened up the way that you want it, allow this to fully dry. But we are not going to seal this and we're not going to epoxy this before the next step. So because this is a learning tool, I want to be very clear that when you do not epoxy a tumbler, this is what can happen. I didn't show the mess up as to where and when my crackle did not crackle, but I wanted to show you how to fix this on this tutorial. We're going to go ahead and repeat the steps again, doing the crackle method starting with the glue. You'll notice that I was able to wash most of this off where I had very thick glue, if you will. It just came right off. Though where it was much thinner, you can see the paint still adhered to my wood grain. So here I'm gonna go ahead and apply the glue and I kinda of wanna really thicken it up because I'm in a very, Florida warm climate. So if my glue is not very thick, the thinner portions and sections are gonna dry much faster, which is kind of annoying because the thinner the glue, the less likely it is to crackle. So now I'm ready to go ahead and apply my paint. When it comes to the paint, you really want to just try very hard not to overstroke it. So we're going to go in an up and down fashion, very smooth and very quick. I do have pretty thick amount of paint on my brush, which makes this process so much easier. I also want to mention as well that I only allowed about five, maybe seven minutes in between applying the glue and then here adding on to the paint. You'll notice before I'm even finished with the paint, it's already starting to crackle. Once you've applied all of your paint, you have two options, one of which you can just let it sit and it will continue to crackle on its own, or you can push it by using a heat gun. If you decide to use the heat gun, just be sure to never leave the heat gun in any section for any length of time because we wouldn't want to burn it. Once you are satisfied with your crackle effect, we're going to let this tumbler sit off and fully dry for at least an hour, if not more. So if you remember, in the very beginning of the video, I had showed you that I had made a mess up and that I had washed the tumbler. That's how I came across this very happy accident. I'm going to wash this tumbler and I'm going to remove bits of that glue and the paint. So typically for this step, we would be using acetone in order to get that distress geode look. However, you have to remember this tumbler has not been epoxied yet. So if I were to use acetone on this tumbler, I'm going to strip it right to the stainless steel. So to start, this does take a second to kind of start rubbing it out and being a little bit aggressive, but not too aggressive to which we're damaging the wood grain. As the water does continue to trickle over the entire tumbler, the glue starts loosening up and you can actually feel that it gets somewhat slimy, but kind of gooey, but it then makes it so much easier to remove. I also want to point out too that you're not removing so much glue and or paint that you are going to risk damaging your drain. However, if this is in fact a concern for you, you can absolutely do this with the water hose.
once you have removed your desired amount, we're then going to go ahead and let this sit and fully dry. Now that our tumbler is completely dry, we are ready to go ahead and move on with our mica powder. I've chosen two beautiful colors from AB Designs, and I'll be sure to have all of the links down in the description for you below. So originally, I was going to go ahead and just be very sporadic with my mica powders, but then I decided that these two colors blended so well together that I wanted to do the entire thing. Of course, you can do as much or as little mica powder as you prefer for your particular tumbler. Once you've added all the mica powders that you want, make sure you seal this tumbler before you go into its first coat of epoxy. Also, if you get any mica powders throughout your wood grain, you can easily take a baby wipe and clean up those sections before you seal it. Now that she has been sealed and dried, we're going to go in with the snow caps additive to give a little bit of a bling bling. Nothing too much because this is a real country girl style tumbler and country girls are just not flashy girls. So I wanted to keep this as super subtle and sweet as possible. Once your tumbler is completely cured, we're now ready to go in with our floral boots design, which is a clear cast decal from AB Designs. I've already trimmed mine down, which is totally not necessary. I think that's a personal preference. And I'm using a contact sheet in order to keep my fingerprints up off the back. Anytime you're working with a clear cast decal, it's really important to make sure that you have a non-sanded epoxied tumbler. Otherwise, you are going to see the scratch marks up underneath. So you'll notice when I pull this contact sheet off that my design is very subtle, but I love the way that this looks and the way that the crackle comes through that design. So I decided to go one step further and add in some floral from Banff Custom Creations. So basically where the flowers are, you will not be able to see the crackle through, but where the clear portion is of this decal, you will be able to see the crackle. So now time to place a country girl. I wrote this and cut this using Cricut Design Space, and this is a black holographic vinyl from Tech Wrap Craft Vinyl. This tumbler did not need to be sealed once I had placed all of my decals, and it only needed two final coats of epoxy and she was completed.